just a second and just Oh, you can see my slide. Yeah, 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 it's there, it's there. Yeah. So I thank Dr. Namrata for giving me this opportunity, and uh, I'll just share with you some of my uh, 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 about how we should be managing patients with VKC, which is a very severe uh, condition that we see in our day-to-day -day practice and very difficult to treat. I think the allergies are globally increasing as well as in India. We see a lot of early age uh, pediatric VKC, and we see very chronic patients who have very severe disease, often they may be associated with uh, atopy. And uh, the, one of the extra problem that we have in our country is that patients tend to self-medicate with steroids, which can create more complications in the long term. Uh, there may be various factors like genetic factors, environmental hygiene related and nutritional factors, which may be causing an increase in allergy globally. So, management options which can target various uh, molecules and cytokines in the chain of the allergy. However, steroids somehow are used more often and uh, often the patients tend to use them on their own and get into more complications. So the limitations that we have presently are one is that we don't have proper grading systems and uh, management algorithms or flow charts. And uh, also the patients may have unrealistic ex uh, expectations because of inadequate counseling that we sometimes uh, get into. And therefore, the problem that we face is that if we over treat our patients, we may have side effects, whereas if we under treat our patients and we are uh, not adequately controlling inflammation, we are going to have tissue damage. Very often what happens in a general ophthalmic clinic is to prescribe a tapering schedule of steroid drops for four weeks. Uh, the patient does get better, but often there is a recurrence and the same course may be repeated or sometimes the patient goes to another eye surgeon where the same course is again repeated and eventually uh, the patient gets frustrated. So I think what we need to do in our practice is really to try and evaluate what type of disease we are seeing, what how severe it is, how periodicity uh, is there, how many recurrences are there. And based on that, uh, we need to counsel the patient, set up the expectations, and then look at how we can manage the inflammation on a long-term basis, and which would be safe so that we are able to control the disease as well as uh, reduce the number of uh, side effects of the medications. We require a system by which we can grade the disease at each visit and therefore decide what would be the best uh, treatment strategy and modify our treatment accordingly. So we could grade disease as maybe very mild disease. We know when there is just some signs uh, in, in the conjunctiva with few symptoms, uh, no really corneal involvement is there. And then we have more moderate disease where you'll have early corneal involvement. A severe form of allergy could be where you have more severe signs which involve the cornea. We know that is what uh, threatens the vision and uh, we are scared of getting corneal complications and then we could reach a stage where there are uh, irreversible corneal damage may happen these may be cases who have recurrent shield ulcers or limbal uh, deficiency these could be the blinding varieties of disease and we may also have a burnt out allergy which may present like an ocular surface disease or a dry eye which is again needs a little different way of management we also need to distinguish whether we are looking at a disease which is chronic going on for 365 days or which is intermittent with few episodes, maybe a once in two or three months and accordingly decide what would be the best management lines. Not to over medicate. So patients with mild disease can usually be managed with lubricants, antihistaminics and mast cell stabilizers. And when we look at a moderate uh, or early corneal involvement, you can use mild steroids which will be good if the disease is intermittent. However, when we have more chronic forms or more severe forms of disease, we will have to try and use steroid sparing agents as a first line of management, along with low dose uh, topical steroids, which may be preferably surface acting steroids, but we will require more potent steroids in patients with very severe disease. We may require to give them supratarsal injection of steroids and potent steroid drops in addition to the steroid sparing calcineurin inhibitors that we would like to use. Also in uh, extremely severe forms of disease, which may be blinding varieties of VKC, we may require to use systemic immunosuppression. I think one strategy which we have not used very often in the past is allergy testing and immunotherapy. And I think this is something which holds promise. Only thing is it requires three to five years of uh, prolonged treatment 
but can basically change the natural course of allergic disease so we need to treat our patients in a step ladder pattern try to grade them at every visit and then try to go up the ladder if the inflammation is not getting controlled and once the inflammation is under control either because of the medication or because the natural allergy process wanes and waxes as we know we can go down the ladder and try to use more safer medications and less potent medications to control or keep the disease under adequate control therefore using a grading system so that we can grade the severity and accordingly adjust the treatment in a step ladder fashion will help us to over or under medicate our patient so we need to optimally medicate so that the side effects of under and over treatment are balanced and this would be very safe for long term management in our patients just a little bit of a busy slide here but i'll just tell you uh, as a general ophthalmologist often the people ask like a patient coming to clinic how would you try to analyze and manage so i think it's very essential because most of the patients often have gone to several other ophthalmologists taken a lot of previous treatment you look at all records look at the medications used what has been the response to the treatment and based on that you can decide what type of case you are treating and then accordingly decide the next line of management for example a child who has used uh, surface steroids and has had a good response to treatment and the however the there is a recurrence within a very few weeks maybe or within 2 to 4 weeks of treatment probably has a moderate grade of chronic vkc however a child which then the eye doesn't require medication for 2 or 3 months maybe having a intermittent uh, periodicity vkc of a moderate grade a uh, child where the surface steroids don't give a adequate response which you can often know from the history may be a chronic vkc of a moderate grade however children who are extremely photophobic and they have a lot of symptoms despite using surface steroids we are probably looking at a more severe form of disease and those who have previously used potent steroids if they had good response again we need to see if it's recurring as soon as the steroids are tapering we it's a chronic disease whereas if the uh, response is maintained and the remission is maintained for a long period of time probably it's a intermittent periodicity disease so based on this then we can uh, decide what would be the best line to start treatment and follow up these children uh, there are some questions uh, which often come into our mind is oral antihistaminics well uh, we would use them only if there are significant systemic allergies associated oral leukotriene inhibitors have limited benefit non steroidal anti inflammatory drops are best avoided if there is corneal epithelial damage because they may increase toxicity and predispose to more complications uh, in children who have severe rhinitis nasal steroids would be useful lubricants are always useful to flush out the allergens and because there is also often an associated dry eye and surface inflammation which tends to get better when you use lubricants and cold compresses are very effective to reduce itching in a small child of course we need to stress on hygiene and avoidance measures and to use some sort of a protective goggles need to be used dual acting agents such as olopatadine azelastine ketotifen these are the drugs which we often use today and they are extremely effective in seasonal allergies or very mild allergies however when we look at vkc we know it's an immune mediated disease where they are supportive in their role however we need to definitely use immunosuppressive agents and i think the best agents that we have today are steroids which you can use for limbal disease as drops and sometimes for severe tarsal disease you can use supratarsal injections as well however we need to understand that they have their own set of side effects so we can use them in acute episodes when the child has severe vkc and it's always good to use them in a pulsed approach and when we are looking at long term maintenance therapy probably once we use uh, calcineurin inhibitors we can use steroids as a Uh, low dose maintenance can be given always try and use soft steroids and always we try to monitor the usage and uh, see that the patient does not misuse or self uh, use steroid and uh, they disappear from your follow up protocols we also need to understand that the steroid response may be higher in children 
and uh, there is a propensity which may be there to develop cataract which may be difficult to monitor in extremely photophobic children so if we encounter extremely small children with severe inflammation or children who already have a steroid response which is documented or a lens change is documented i think we have to be very cautious of further continuing the steroid usage uh, cyclosporin is a very good uh, steroid sparing agent which can be used in extremely mild cases we can use commercial cyclosporin however in most cases of vkc we would require to formulate the cyclosporin about strength of 0.5 to 2% we can uh, formulate it using a lubricant drop and dilute the injectable preparation of cyclosporin or we can also use uh, orosporin i have no fa- financial interest but it is also available as 2% which can be used either directly or can be uh, diluted to a uh, lower concentration which improves its uh, tolerance levels and cyclosporin has been shown way back uh, 25 years back that it is stable in artificial tears and it works well as a preparation uh so the cyclosporin as we know is a steroid sparing agent we can use it safely for a very long period of time because the allergy in general tends to go on chronically in these uh, severe cases for a very long period of time and uh it has been reported to be used up to even 7 years of uh treatment tacrolimus is now commercially available it is uh, similar to cyclosporin it has the convenience uh, of being available on the market shelf unlike you require to prepare a cyclosporin at a higher concentration however the tolerance with tacrolimus again is a issue and you can use it over the lids or inside the eye depending on the uh, tolerance that the child has and in severe cases when you have patients with shield ulcer if the shield ulcer has a clear base uh, very early on if you are able to diagnose you can just use a steroid and an antibiotic drop to aid the suppression of allergy and uh, heal the ulcer however once the ulcer base is more opalescent you need to debride the overlying surface to get a clear base because this is where there is a deposition of eosinophilic material which prevents epithelial sliding and sometimes you may need to combine this with a supratarsal steroid injections and when we have patients who have extremely severe plaque formation we need to excise the plaque and uh, debride the surface and then in rare situations if the ulcer doesn't still heal you might have to require doing an amniotic membrane graft or give oral steroids it's very essential that when you look at a shield ulcer always rule out infection and for that you need to look at anterior chamber reaction presence of any focal infiltrates and whenever there is doubt it is better to scrape because once you give steroids uh, the infection can really go for a toss very rare that systemic immunosuppression is required in uh, children with vkc uh, however for a short term period we know systemic steroids are safe and can be used but if we are looking at a long term management uh, systemic cyclosporin is a uh, very much more uh, safer and effective so when you treat appropriately i think uh, probably it's a rare situation that you read a systemic treatment you may require systemic steroid in a emergency situation for example you get a large shield ulcer in a poorly managed vkc no previous treatment has been taken adequately you might bridge the gap with a systemic steroid similarly you can get very severe blinding disease where you may use oral cyclosporin to sort of control the disease uh, so that we don't get into more uh, complications similarly if you do a reconstructive surgery on the ocular surface you may need to systemically immunosuppress uh, some of these children so it is very rare however it is something that we may require in our armamentarium at time there are some of these cases where you may require systemic cyclosporin and this can be sight saving and vision saving and uh, may be very effective in some of these children uh, surgical management of giant cobblestones has also been mentioned by using either oral amniotic uh, oral mucous membrane or an amniotic membrane graft may be used again in very serious refractory cases which don't respond to treatment ancillary management may be required to treat the complication that happen when you have a chronic vkc and which is itself a separate chapter and i think after doing all that we need to understand that there are several avoidance measures which is uh, ophthalmologists we need to remember and try to uh, spend some time and guide our patients so that we can reduce the exposure to allergens and help these uh, children require less number of medications thank you